Hi, I'm Emily Rose. I'm a professional wildlife and pastel pencil artist, and I'm here to share with you another one of my tips for getting drawing and getting it right. So in the last video, we looked at the best materials to work on, and that was the Clairefontaine pastel map, for me at least. This time we're going to look at the different colours which are available. So you can see here I've got two horses behind me. One is on the sand and one is on the dark grey. Now I chose the different colours purposefully. When it comes to choosing the colour of your board, there are quite a few things that really should be taken into account before you make your decision and they do make a really big difference to the finished result. So if we look at the one that's on the dark grey, for example, we can see the Arabian Stallion. He's got a beautiful tan coat and this would not show up too well if we were to draw him on the sand coloured board. They're very similar in colours and he's, he's also got some beautiful lighting on his back that's very, very light and I wanted to get that to show out. Whereas if we use the lighter colour sandpaper, you can see again that the tonal difference between them wouldn't be that big and I wouldn't get that beautiful soft light on his back to shine out the way that it does on the darker pastel mat. If we look at the um, the horse that's galloping on the sand coloured paper however, if we look at that one, we can see that the horse is very dark and so the sand coloured paper is probably about a mid-tone but the horse is much darker and so again he stands out really nicely. I've used a warm coloured paper there for a warm coloured horse. I could have used a cool colour paper which would have made the contrast um, much greater between those warm and cools if I did draw on him on a, a blue coloured um, pastel mat for example. However, by drawing him on a warmer coloured paper, I get a greater range in my warm coloured pencils. So what do I mean by this? So we're going to switch now and we're going to see what happens when we use the same coloured pencils but on different coloured pastel mat and you can see the amazing difference it makes. Okay, so now let's take a look and see how this works in practice. Let's see what happens when we use the same pencils on different tones and colours of board. So I've got one up here, which wasn't done for this, but it's just been done for an online tutorial that's coming out in July. And you can see all of the different colours running down here, and we're going to use a couple of those on these boards so that we can compare as well. So let's start off with the black, which is 199. So this is the light blue, this is the dark grey, this is the sand, and finally we have the wine. Obviously for a tone like black, it doesn't appear to have made a huge amount of difference. I think the main thing to point out is that because these two are lighter toned boards and particularly the light grey, in fact let's just pop a splodge on here as well. You can see that obviously the contrast between the black here and the board compared to the black here and the board, the contrast here is much greater. So the black appears to come out darker than it does on the darker two. Let's carry on. I'm now going to use the cobalt blue from Derwent. Okay, so we definitely see a difference in how the pencil behaves here. On the three lighter tones of board, we can see a fairly consistent um, representation of the colour blue. Um, here it appears fairly vivid because of course it's on, it's on a, a lighter colour, so again the contrast is a little bit higher um, and the, the saturation on this um, paper is also higher, so the colours are bouncing against each other a little bit more. Against the neutral, um, the colour appears perhaps a little bit flatter if we were to compare them. However, the most interesting has to be the wine. Now, tonally, this blue is similar to the wine coloured board. So, if we were to turn the image black and white, the blue and the board would be a similar 
tone of gray. However, of course, in terms of color, they're quite different. So we get a strange jarring effect going on here. It also doesn't seem quite as bold and bright as it is on the lighter colors of board. It shows up fairly well, however, on the um, dark gray. Again, it doesn't appear to be quite as zesty, um, sorry, quite as brilliant as it is on the maize colored paper there. Okay, so here we have it. So we've got little testers from every pencil out of this pot um, on each of the different colors. Now, the first thing to notice is how all of the darker colors on the maze show up really, really well. We'd take the um, light blue, which is probably the next darkest colored board. Again, they're showing up quite well, but there is an obvious difference here, especially with the blues. You can see that the blues here are not contrasted as much as they are on this maize colored board. If we're then to pick up the sand color, here the blues um, are contrasted a little bit more. They appear a little bit more vibrant, especially the light blue here. But again, the colors on the maize, which is lighter, they appear darker than they do on the sand colored board. Now, if we look at those colors on the two darker boards that we've got out, the wine being the darker of the two, you'll notice that these colors don't appear half as bold as they do on the lighter board. So what this really means is when we want to draw um, subjects, such as the starling here, we won't be able to get as much contrast in those darker tones. So he looks wonderful and what it's what it's done is it's allowed me to get some nice soft edges in him. So it's worked for what I want to do and it's made these lighter colours stand out because they're contrasted against the dark board a little bit more. However, if I want lots of details in the darks, I'm going to really struggle on this dark coloured board because the tone of the board doesn't contrast the dark tones very well at all. And what you can see with this um, reddish pink colour here it actually almost disappears because the tone is very similar to the, the tone of the board and the colour is also similar. So if I was to get out more colours around this tone, I'm thinking the 283, which is a brown that I use quite a lot. The browns wouldn't show up too well on this. I'll just get a brown and show you. So I've just grabbed a 283 and I use this brown quite a lot. You can see that although it shows up, it's not overly um, bold and the colour, which is really burgundy, isn't coming through too well. If I do it on this lighter coloured piece of paper here, it shows up as being really nice and dark. So I've got another dark tone. Um, it would work well in the shadows. We get a similar effect on the two slightly lighter coloured pieces of uh, board as well. And I work on these two the most. So I still got on these two boards, I've still got quite a good range in the shadows. And it shows up fairly well on the dark gray. One that again, it wouldn't show up well on is the dark blue, which in tone is very similar to this wine color. So you can see that the contrast between this 283 and the wine isn't that great. Whereas with the lighter colored um, papers, there's a greater contrast going on. And this shows up really well as a shadow color. However, if of course we move into the light colors, and I'm just thinking I missed one out on here. If we look at this lemon, which is the 102, that is contrasted magnificently against the wine. And that's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, of course, it's much lighter in tone than the board, but also yellow and purple are complementary colors, which means they're opposites on the color wheel. And being opposite and as far away from each other as is possible, they're as different as possible, is another big contrast that we've got going on there. But of course, when we look at the maize colored board, that's where the 102 is. You can hardly even see it because it is so similar in tone and color to the board. We've lost that range of yellows. So if the yellows were really important, such as 
catching the golden edges of the wing on the starling. We might not want to use this maze if we want that to be a bright, bold feature. If we don't want it to be as bright and bold, then it doesn't matter. You can see up here, I've got plans for an iris and some of those petals, I've actually used the 102, some white and other very light yellow colors in specifically because it gives me soft edges and I want this to be very gentle and soft and feminine. So I've used um, a color of board that's going to give me a very delicate, gentle finish. Of course, if I did it on the darker wine, this would look very dramatic instead. So I'm already thinking about the, um, the play that the board is gonna have at the end of the painting. How is it gonna make the painting feel? So the most important thing when you're picking a color of board to work on is to think about which range you really need from your pencils. Do you need a lot of range in the shadows or do you need a lot of range in the highlights? If you really need those highlights to be very bright and powerful, you need to pick a slightly co darker color board. Um, you don't want to go for the lighter ones. The mid-tones, however, they're kind of the all-rounder. They do everything for you. And these two are really great options. And I work on these um, a lot. I work on those the most because I have a good range both in the shadows and in the highlights. And of course, by changing the color, but not so much the tone, that way I can just um, change the energy of my piece, like I did with the foxes, where we're using sand colored paper to draw foxes that are in sandy colors. Again, like the iris here, it's gonna give me a softer edge. Whereas if we were to contrast it and use the blue, you can see the orange here pops out against the blue in a way that it doesn't on the sand. We have more energy from this one. So get yourself some scrap pieces of card like these and just do some testers. See which colors are actually gonna show up well for your work. And what you'll also notice as a closing note here is that when we put the light colors on dark board, you need to be careful. When you press too hard and really want them to show up, what you can end up doing is disrupting the tooth of the card a little bit and we get a bit of a grainy effect where we can see bits of the board showing through. Again, because these are a darker color board, darker tone, the little bits of board that show through are gonna contrast a lot and we get a grainy finish. If you choose a slightly lighter coloured board, the contrast between the bits of board showing through and the light pencil on top won't be as great. And of course, if you go for a very light coloured board, then the contrast is almost not there and you won't notice it particularly at all. So these are all things just to have a bit of a think about and have a little bit of a play before you get going. Okay, so hopefully now you can see why it really pays off to draw yourself a palette before you start each of your paintings. Of course, you can do what I did at the beginning. I had lots of scraps of paper everywhere and I'd have my most used pencils marked on those and I could just take them and see which is going to work best with my reference photo. It will save you a lot of time in the long run. And speaking from personal experience, if you do get that pastel matte color wrong and you don't have the range in the hue that you need, it's really difficult to work with and you're much better just starting over as frustrating as that is. So I'd get yourself one of those trial packs of pastel matte paper so that you've got a range of different colours. You can do yourself some um, little tester swabs and you can find out which are your favourite colours to work on. For me, I like working on the sand and the light blue the most, but I also work on a couple of others like the dark grey. I work on the light green, dark blue, but generally speaking, it's those first two that I most prefer because tonally they are in the middle, so nice and neutral, and they also show up the range of colors in the pastel pencils fairly well. So enjoy this, take your time with it, and see what you can do to really make your subject bounce out of your next drawing. Until then, happy drawing.